my, my intuition tells me that we will find signs of extraterrestrial life long before we recognize them. Broadly, what I work on is uh, studying stellar effects on planetary habitability. The data I mostly use to do that these days is from NASA's Kepler mission, which is very, very precise measurements of how bright a particular star is over time. So Kepler launched in the spring of 2009, just a couple of months after I had joined Berkeley, and so I got to be part of the very beginnings of the Kepler mission, um, and in particular, the fact that I was here at Berkeley and in the Bay Area was instrumental in really getting to see the data um, earlier than, than most of the world. So the two aspects that I work on um, regarding habitability of planets are that I look for uh, stellar flares in the Kepler data. So these are transient brightenings of a star that take place over a couple of hours. The second aspect of what I work on is actually um, more directly related to the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. So in the past, when we've gone and looked for technologically advanced civilizations, um, actually looking for signals or either intentional or otherwise, what we've typically tried to do is figure out what kind of signal we would have sent or what kind of signal we could generate with our own technology. What you can also do with the Kepler data is to look for things that are unusual. You can do this using a family of algorithms, um, computer algorithms called machine learning. So what I'm doing is going through the database and asking um, what in here looks like something that I don't recognize. You just say, give me anything that's weird. Now the downside of that is that you don't get a smoking gun. Um, you don't get a signal that you have figured out would be due to an advanced civilization. You just get a lot of things that are weird, whether it's just you know vanilla astrophysics or whether it's actually signal from an advanced civilization. But if you were to sit down and imagine who can create a large scale change in, their, in the brightness of their parent star, then sure it would have to be somebody that was, um, or something that was much more advanced than we are. So the thing that I think that we're mostly learning so far is that we don't do enough searching. Um, you know, people love to bring up the, the Fermi paradox and you know, if we, you know, if life is common in the galaxy and there's all these exoplanets, then where are the other civilizations? And honestly, for all of our searching, like we still, it's still a relatively small fraction of the field that does it over a relatively small area of the electromagnetic spectrum with relatively limited resources. And you know, if we hadn't solved another problem in astrophysics with the same kind of attention that we generally as a field don't pay to looking for advanced civilizations, then we wouldn't be all that surprised that we hadn't solved the problem yet, right? So um, I don't think that the Fermi paradox is actually really all that much of a paradox because we haven't been looking for very long and we haven't been looking very broadly. If you look at Earth, for example, just looking for what was called radio leakage or unintentional signaling by technology on the planet, Earth has gotten quieter and quieter as time goes on. As we become more advanced, we don't use radio nearly as much as we did. And so we're actually a radio quiet planet relative to the brief period of time where we were loud enough that we could have been detected. So I think that we'll probably detect something and then we will argue over it for a very long time before anybody really claims a smoking gun um, for technologically advanced civilizations being discovered or even just for microbial life being discovered. Um, so the question to me is not, you know, when will we detect it? It's when will we believe it?